if my computer responds, great. So as um, Susanna uh, was pointing out, this uh, part of the group work will focus specifically on um, what are the challenges that we've encountered around working in um, silos um, or not working across sectors or so, um, better said. Um, so there are some, sorry, excuse me, I've got navigation issues. So our first question is, what has been done to address the challenges, the challenges of child participation during infectious diseases outbreak? Uh, in this case, uh, working around, specifically on working across sectors. So, so what has been done uh, to address the challenges of avoiding working in silos or working across sector during um, sorry, I'm not in the round. Yeah, uh, during infectious diseases outbreaks. And um, we will need to start. Um, I'm just going to check how many people we are in the group. And then if we can uh, have you go into breakout rooms and you can discuss this into your breakout rooms before going. Uh, before coming back to this room where we are going to um, collect the feedback that we got like in the various group where the chats have been happening. I hope this is not too confusing. I'll uh, get better at navigating this like as we uh, move along this content. Um, but if there are no questions on this, then Richard, maybe you can help us set up. Yes, Audrey, go ahead. Yes, this is the group where we can have some discussion in French as well. So maybe the French speaking colleagues, if you could put FR in front of your name, so we can put you in the right room. For les collègues qui parlent français, si vous pouvez mettre FR de votre, devant votre nom, on pourra essayer de vous mettre dans la même pièce pour la, la, la discussion de groupe. Oh, no. Yes, please, Susanna, go ahead. I was just going to ask a question. So when we go into the breakout groups in just a moment, are we yes. answering that first question that you displayed? Yes, was correct. A challenge. Would you mind putting that up again just so I can write it down or so other colleagues can do the same? Yes, it should be showing in the Google slide that um, we'll be sharing with you in the chat box. But okay, if you want to write it down, like Susanna, that's even more diligent of you. And uh, so it would be really great, like if you were to do so. I'm just going to repeat like the questions for every, the question that we're going to address to this, uh, um, through this breakout exercise. What are your recommendations to address sectoral silos, child child protection during future waves of COVID-19 and infectious diseases outbreak. So Richard has just shared in the chat box, Richard is our fantastic producer for uh, room number three, and please uh, stay with me <laughs> throughout this uh, uh, day three, um, has just shared the Google Doc that you will be able to note uh, your thinking of I would suggest that within of like within uh, your or within your breakout rooms, you actually choose one person to note your ideas that have reached consensus within the group, um, so that like we don't jam the system too much. Uh, every room will be associated with one page, like on the Google Doc. So please uh, do select the Google Doc that is relevant to your um, group. Is um, everyone happy with the choice, the language choice, and all of that? It seems that's like. very good. So I am, as the present, as the producer, I'm Richard, and I'm just sorting out the breakout rooms now to great. make sure that French speakers are in the French speaking rooms. So I'm just okay, doing that great. now. Excellent, uh, Richard. Thank you so much. There are 26 people, so the French speaker can be in one group and then we can have uh, one or two other groups working in English. 
strengths. And so it's going to be sort of between th uh, three and five people. I think we've got uh, six French speakers, so maybe one group of six, if that's okay with you, Elena? That sounds, that sounds perfect. And then we can have two groups for the remaining English speaker, Richard. Uh, so, so we have, let me just see, so we've got one, two, three, four, five groups of English speakers. Uh, in fact, we have another one there. Let me just move there. Uh, in fact, I think what we're going to do is I'm going to slightly move things around. So we've got just a slightly large number of people just to make sure it's yeah. a good discussion. Yes, please do that so that uh, we don't have groups which are too small. I'm sorry if like, we keep you waiting, so just uh, bear with us while we're solving these challenges. And I hope you're all collecting your thoughts on um, intersectoral collaboration. So. And I'll be visiting you um, across the rooms as, if I get to move along. That's it. So I'm pleased to say that we've got uh, enough uh, French speakers for two rooms. So this is excellent, uh, excellent news. So I'm going to slightly change it again. So we'll have four people in each of those rooms. So let me just move those now. So we have there. French speakers. So we'll have 10 minutes like to discuss like this question and then you'll come back to this room. Richard will bring you back to this room. Richard will also notify when you have just one minute left for your discussion. And then we'll quickly debrief on what has come up like in the in the in this room before we move like to the next question. Thank you. And so hopefully you'll be able to see uh, you'll have your link to the to the uh, the Google Slides for each, each group. Hi everyone. I, I know it's a bit, um, we need to warm up a little bit and it's not easy to discuss um, uh, through this mean, but it's the new normal. We need to get used to it. I hope the French conversations were inspiring. I've started to see that there were some preliminary thoughts put on the on the Google Slides, but please, if you have not finished noting them down, do continue to do so. We're not prescriptive on people continuing to think to think through the recommendations and uh, to write them down in the slide doc that we have provided. Um, I am looking through some of the um, um, slides that you have written down and some of the thinking that has been put down. Um, and there are, and I don't know, I'm going to put the question back to, to you all. Uh, is there an interesting point that you have shared within your group, within your group that you would like to share in plenary with everyone? Before um, I can give you a quick idea of other ideas that have been discussed and we move into the next uh, breakout exercise. Okay, if there is silence, I guess like I can share some of your thinking. Um, it, I think uh, that's uh, group four uh, shared challenges about the back to school work and linking child protection and education, training community outreach workers, uh, specifically health on identification and referral child protection cases, strengthening referral networks with health, um, strengthening link, links with social protection, challenges with MHPSS activities for children, training community volunteers. In uh, group two, um, there is a thought around child protection and MHPSS messages shared through remote education modalities. And then someone had a thought about the child labor toolkit structures and its sections around education, FSL, minimum standards. If whomever wrote this could uh, just elaborate a little bit on this so that plenary know what, we're, what we were intending with this? Hi, uh, it's Alison. 
Um, yes, yeah, I, I mean, in the Child Labour Toolkit, we have it very much structured around child protection and then the language and the tools that we use within the child protection world. And then we've structured the education section around the minimum stand, the education minimum standards and the food security section around um, language and different modalities that are used within the food security world. So it was, it was just about kind of that we have our message from child protection, but that we need to fit it into language and a structure that's recognized within other sectors so that we're, we're not um, just giving loads of child protection messages. We're saying, okay, within your programs, you really need to break it down and you need to, as child protection people, we need to understand how food security and education people program so that we can provide the specific advice and guidance that slots into that so i think yeah. it's that was our discussion i don't think we got it down correctly in writing <laughs> sorry no no that's fine it's i guess you know through the google slide there is only so much you can do in 10 minutes <laughs> worth of discussion so thanks alison for summarizing um there is more uh, listed on the on group seven google slide um uh, I'll just um, read. This is Audrey speaking. Can I, can ahead, I Audrey. first summary, both in French and English? Yes, seven? please, it would be lovely. So in the group seven, we have been more talking about successful um, experiences uh, in working together than challenging. So in the group seven, we have talked more about the success of working ensemble que de, que de défi. So the first one was uh, putting together um, education and child protection, working together during school closure with some psychosocial support to children in need. Donc le premier, c'était une approche entre éducation et protection de l'enfance, comment travailler ensemble pendant la fermeture des écoles et pour pouvoir uh, donner uh, du soutien psychosocial aux enfants. We had very good example from Senegal. On a eu un bon exemple du Senegal. Um, where they had um, straight away a multi-sectoral coordination approach. So ils ont eu d'entre les deux une, une coordination multisectorale uh, de la réponse avec plusieurs exemples, with several examples on the slide. Et, um, and in, need, uh, in, need, in uh, Niger, they have <laughs> really rely on community mechanism and protection committees, and they have worked with help to identify sick parents to make sure that children could be looked after and, and receive uh, protection and, and care. So in uh, Niger, they have been reposed on the mechanism of the and they have put in place the committees of protection. They have also worked a lot with the health to ensure that the children of parents malade had access to protection. I'm done. Thank you, Audrey, for such like a quick and efficient summary. Uh, merci. And um, we can now move on into the next step of this exercise. So you will be sent back to the same breakout rooms by a lovely producer, Richard, that um, has been helping us throughout. You will again look for your Google slide, like within the list, within that link that Richard has put in the chat box that he will share again in the chat box as soon as possible. And look for your group number. It shows at the um, top left and corner of your screen. Make sure you choose the correct slide and then go to the second page of this and you will be seeing our second question, which I'm gonna show on my screen like right now. So our second question for this Ne the next 10 minutes to be discussed in your um, breakout is what are your com what are your recommendations to address the sectoral silos child protection during future waves of COVID-19 and or, the, or I, in other infectious diseases outbreaks hopefully not um, as we don't want to wish for them so I would like you guys for the first five minutes like to really jot down all ideas that come to mind on things that we could do better things we could do uh, to work across sectors like we really should and then more towards the end of the discussion uh, a bit ahead towards the eight minute of your discussion we will uh, post a mentimeter question in your chat box and we will ask you to prioritize what are your top three answers what are your top three recommendations 
and one person in each group being described like could include these uh, suggestions in the Mentimeter and we'll be looking at those together when we come back to plenary. So if there are We'll be there to support and uh, if you're not sure how this is working, please like a click for help. Myself or Richard will come in to support. I'll move around groups in case there are questions. Um, but yeah, um, so enjoy the discussion and Richard, if you can go ahead with the breakout rooms. Thank you. And uh, just to add to that, I just wanted to point out that some groups, uh, this is a group we've just been hearing about. So they did the first uh, A1 question. Now there's A2 question. It's all on the same uh, Google slide. The slide. And the third one has the link to the mentee and then one person can click that and answer the question. So that's all on the slides. Uh, I do notice some uh, groups have already moved on. Uh, and there we are, I've already moved on to question two. So well done you. Uh, so please just add to what you've already put on with this time and also of course answering the mentee question. So having said that, let me stop the share and I'm gonna open all the rooms and enjoy the rooms. Thank you, Richard. Yay, welcome back. Um, I think we're, there are still a few people that are coming back, but uh, slowly everyone joining. You can see uh, some of the recommendations that, um, so on, on the screen you're seeing some of the recommendations that have been shared through the Mentimeter are slowly coming through. Please don't stop writing your recommendations uh, now that you're back in plenary because we want to keep track of what's being discussed. I've just had a quick look but I'm not <laughs> as fast as technology. Um, and there are interested in recommendations, right? Like multi sectoral coordination meetings and joint monitoring. I heard something about potential coalitions. INGOs, capacity building of local actors to strengthen future responses. How could there not be an advocate for that, being the learning and development focal point, certainly of primary importance? Um, there is something here around be proactive in pushing into other sectors, for example, sharing child protection key messages, um, advocacy with donors to support the centrality of protection and integrated, integrated approaches in child protection. Um, but please uh, continue to write the Mentimeter um, recommendations that you have. If uh, for um, the group that um, was in room number seven, uh, like you want to write it just in French, that's totally fine as well. We'll be able um, to um, translate them as we go. So don't worry if you're, more comf if you're more comfortable in doing so in that language, that's absolutely fine. Um, and I think we have just uh, one moment left, uh, one minute left, and I would like to encourage you just um, you will have to leave this room and go back like to the plenary where uh, Laura and Judy will just uh, um, go back, go deeper into this session uh, together. You will be asked after um, some presentation there to again uh, join some breakout uh, rooms, um, some, some other groups, um, and I'll see you in those groups most probably. So I would like to thank you all for your engagement in, those exer in this exercise, and I'll see you all in the plenary in a short time frame. Can I, can I say it in French quickly? Yeah, that would be lovely, Audrey. Thanks, you. Thanks. No worries. Chers collègues, on va quitter cette, uh, cette pièce et on va retourner dans la pièce principale dans laquelle on était avec Laura et Judy. On va faire une récap et puis, uh, et puis après on refera exactement le même principe, se, re, se reséparer par pièce. Ok, donc à tout à l'heure et puis bah, merci à vous tous de la part aussi de Merci. C'est la minute.